Heart sound auscultation is an essential part of the cardiac examination. In this video, we have tried to categorize and simplify all normal and abnormal heart sounds in one place. We hope you will enjoy learning heart sounds. Let's begin. To make things simple, we will categorize heart sounds into four categories. Normal, extra, additional heart sounds, and murmurs. 1. Normal heart sounds include first and second heart sounds, also respectively called S1 and S2. Right now, you are listening to S1 and S2. 2. In the extra heart sounds category, are included third heart sound or S3, and fourth heart sound or S4. As we will see, these heart sounds are not normally heard, but can be normal in certain situations. The third category is additional heart sounds and includes clicks and snaps. And last, but not least, the fourth category is cardiac murmurs. Murmurs can be systolic, diastolic, or continuous. Let's explore now each category one by one. First, normal heart sounds, which include S1 and S2. S1 is produced by the closure of mitral and tricuspid valves. It is best heard at the cardiac apex. S1 is loud in patients with mitral stenosis, where there is a short diastolic filling time, and the mitral valve closes against insufficiently emptied, and thus relatively high left atrial pressure. S1 is loud in mitral stenosis, as long as the mitral leaflets are pliable. But it becomes soft when the valves become calcified. S1 becomes soft also in mitral regurgitation and prolonged diastolic filling time such as in cases of left bundle branch block. Coming on to S2. The second heart sound is produced by the closure of aortic and pulmonary valves and is best heard in the aortic area, as well as the left sternal border. Sometimes CS2 is normally split into two separate audible components, denoted as A2 and P2. A2 is the component produced by aortic valve closure, while P2, as guessed correctly, is by the closure of the pulmonary valve. The aortic valve normally closes before the pulmonary valve, thus A2 is heard before P2. So, we denote this normal split of second heart sound as A2P2. As you know, during inspiration, there is increased venous return to the right side of the heart. Therefore, because of increased venous return, the emptying of the right ventricle is slightly delayed, resulting in an increased splitting duration of S2. And by contrast, splitting decreases or vanishes altogether during expiration. This is the physiological splitting. S2, being an important heart sound, deserves some more details. S2 can be assessed based on its intensity and also on the nature of its splitting. In some abnormal conditions, the intensity of the S2 can be either loud or soft. The aortic component or A2 is loud in systemic hypertension and congenital aortic stenosis. While it becomes soft in calcified aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation, the pulmonary component of S2 is louder in pulmonary hypertension. Soft P2 is not relevant clinically. Now, splitting of S2. S2 splitting may belong to one of these three subcategories wide physiological splitting, fixed splitting, and reverse splitting. We have already touched upon the widening of physiological splitting during inspiration, but any other reason that delays the right ventricular emptying will also widen the physiological splitting of S2. Fixed splitting, as the name suggests, does not get affected by respiratory phases. The split remains the same during inspiration as well as expiration. This occurs when there is some connection between the right and left atria, and pressure gets equalized during both phases of respiration. Reverse splitting, as you can guess now, 
is the increase in splitting during expiration, while there is the closure of the gap of a split during inspiration. This happens if either the left heart emptying is delayed or the right heart is becoming quick to empty. Now coming to causes for each category. Wide physiological splitting occurs in the right bundle branch block, pulmonary stenosis, ventricular septal defect, and mitral regurgitation. The first three causes mentioned are the reason for delayed right ventricular emptying. Mitral regurgitation, on the other hand, leads to early closure of the aortic valve due to early left ventricular emptying. Fixed splitting occurs in atrial septal defects. And lastly, reverse splitting is seen in the left bundle branch block, aortic stenosis, coarctation of the aorta, and patent ductus arteriosus. Finished with normal heart sounds, let's proceed to the next category. That is, extra heart sounds, S3 and S4. S3 is produced by tautening of the papillary muscles at the end of rapid diastolic filling. It is also called the sound of distress because it is heard in conditions causing increased preload. As this is a low-pitched sound, therefore it is best heard with the bell of a stethoscope. It is heard in mid-diastole and is louder at the cardiac apex. Its cadence is Kentucky during gallop rhythm. S3 can be normal in children and in young adults. Diseases in which S3 is audible include cardiac failure, aortic valve insufficiency, mitral regurgitation, patent ductus arteriosus, and VSD. S4 is produced during the late phase of diastole when atria contract but against a poorly compliant ventricle. A high-pressure atrial wave is reflected back and S4 is heard. It is a late diastolic low-pitched sound. S4 is lost during AF, even if ventricular compliance is still poor. Can you answer why that happens? Please share your answer in the comments. S4 cadence as Tennessee in gallop rhythm. Left ventricular compliance can be reduced in systemic hypertension, aortic stenosis, acute myocardial infarction, acute mitral regurgitation, and advanced age, thus producing left ventricular S4. Right ventricular S4, on the other hand, is produced by pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary stenosis. And with this, we have come to the end of the second category. Now let's see the third category of heart sounds. That is additional heart sounds. This includes clicks and snaps. Let's explore clicks first. Clicks are produced during systole by doming of abnormal aortic or pulmonary valves or due to prolapse of mitral valves. There are two types of clicks, ejection systolic clicks and systolic clicks. These are high-pitched sounds. As the name indicates, ejection systolic clicks occur in the early part of systole, just after S1. These are heard in aortic and pulmonary areas, as well as on the left sternal border, and are caused by the doming of aortic or pulmonary stenosis during early systole. Such clicks are audible as long as valves are still mobile and not calcified. Systolic clicks can occur due to mitral leaflet prolapse, with or without regurgitation, in the middle or late part of the systole. These clicks are audible in the mitral area. Now snaps. There is in fact one sound in this subcategory, known as the opening snap. This is heard in mitral stenosis and is a high-pitched, diastolic sound, produced by the sudden opening of the stenosed valve. It can occur at a variable distance from S2 and is followed by a mid-diastolic murmur of mitral stenosis, 
heard easily in the mitral area with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. And with this, we conclude the third category. Now coming on to our final category, murmurs. Murmurs can be systolic, diastolic, and continuous. Continuous murmurs are not produced by cardiac abnormalities per se, instead, these are heard in patent ductus arteriosus and AV fistulae. But they are included here for the sake of thoroughness. Murmurs are very important in cardiac auscultation, and we have dedicated a complete video to it. The link is given in the video description. Thanks for watching. We hope you have found this video very useful. If so, please do share it with your colleagues and let us know with your feedback in the comments. See you around in our other videos.